Hello, this is Jerry Alt again with another tutorial. Today I thought we would look at Photoshop and the ability to make your own textures and backgrounds. Uh, if you saw my last video, I talked about using a textured background to feather into your subject to make a more interesting and artistic version. Well, that's fine if you have textures and backgrounds, but maybe you don't. And while you can do a Google search and find them online, there's a variety of places. There's a website called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S dot com, that gives you access to a lot of free textures and free backgrounds. I thought it would be interesting to take a couple of minutes and show you how you can make your own. So what I've opened up here in Photoshop is an image I took in uh, Kenya a couple of years ago. It's a nice enough photo of elephants, but what I was more interested in were the tonal qualities of the photo. So I've got this nice uh, reddish brown, which is actually dirt on the elephants because they roll around in dirt and mud to cool off and to protect their skin from insects. As well as the fact, interestingly, um, elephants can get sunburned. Um, but anyway, I've got that. I've got some blue, green, you know, almost kind of an aqua here. This is a hill behind them, but it's got the tonal qualities that I might want in sky. So I'm going to show you a quick and easy way. Um, there's no real sophistication to this. Look through your photos. Maybe you've got a nice, interesting photo of flowers, you know, tulips this time of year growing in the yard, and you took a nice um, colorful shot, why not repurpose that and make a copy where you can turn it into a texture and use those colors in future projects. So first thing I'm going to do here in Photoshop is I've got this background image. Whenever I'm working in Photoshop, I don't want to destroy my underlying photo, so I always make a copy and Command J or Control J if you're on a PC will give you a second copy. So you can see down here I now have the background and I have a layer one. So we're going to work on layer one. I'm going to select that and the first thing I'm going to do to get us started is go up to the filter menu at the top, go down to blur, and to Gaussian Blur. Now if you're using Paint Shop Pro or On One software or any similar editing program other than Photoshop, you likely have a blur tool. And if you haven't used it before, it's a really powerful tool if you know what you're doing. Now for the most part, typically, you know, we would blur an image a lot less. You know, maybe we want something in the background to you know, look like it's a little more bokeh, out of focus. But in this case, I'm not looking for the elephant. I'm looking for the color texture. So I'm going to slide this all the way up. And you know what? That's pretty good for my purposes right now. So now I've got a photo. You and I know that it's a couple of elephants. But in a moment, that's going to go away as well. So the next thing we need to do here is we're going to paint on this layer. So I'm going to select the brush tool over here. Uh, if you still have the defaults, then it's B for brush. And you'll get a group of three brushes typically that you can pick from. The standard paint brush, a pencil tool, and then what's called a mixer brush. Um, I really discovered the mixer brush a short time ago, and it's an amazing tool. But for what we're doing today, we don't need that. So what I'm going to do now is go up to my brush panel and to start out I'm going to take a standard general soft round brush hardness of zero because I don't want any hard lines on this and I'm going to make this pretty big okay so uh, that's not even big enough we're gonna here hang on a second you can make your brush bigger or smaller by using the bracket keys on your keyboard they'd be above the question mark um, the next to top row on the right side of your keyboard. So right bracket makes the brush bigger, left bracket makes it smaller. I want a nice big brush. And then what I'm going to do is, right now I've got my default colors of black and white pick. 
I'm going to click on the box for the foreground color, the black, and I want to pick something that's in this photo to get me started. Maybe I'll pick some blue up here from the sky. And what you see happens over here in the color picker is it found that color of blue. If I clicked on the brown, it's going to take me into the orangey and, you know, down into the more plain brown. And uh, so actually, let's do this. I'm going to pick a little bit brighter color here. I've got a big brush. I want to set my opacity down to something less than 100%. So I'm going to put that down to about 60%. I've got my flow at 22%. Maybe I'll move that up a little bit to, oh, I don't know, 40-ish thereabouts. Because I don't want this to look like I'm painting over it. What I really want, as you can see, as I hold down my mouse and move it around, I'm just adding some color very softly. And the reason for the soft brush is because it fades out. And so this effect isn't giving me hard spots. If I went to my brush tool and I put the hardness all the way to the, to the right and I click, I'm just going to get a round object. And if you do that a couple of times, you're just going to get some ugly stuff. So I'm going to back up two steps, go back to where I was, make that brush soft again. I'm going to maybe change up my opacity a little bit here, go a little bit higher on the opacity, leave the flow where it is, and do a couple of more. In particular, it was dark where this baby elephant was, and that's going to add some more color. Now I'm going to pick another color. And this time I do want to go into that blue range, I think. So I'm going to likewise pick something that's an interesting blue. Uh, maybe make this even bigger and just add a little bit of color like that. Okay. That's starting to have some. I kind of leave that one down there. I kind of like the darker. But maybe over here on the side I'll add a little blue. All right. I'm going to go back and pick another one. Actually, I'm going to show you a different brush. Let's go back up to the brush panel. When you get Photoshop, it should come with a variety of brushes. There are these special effect brushes that are available here. Anytime you look at the brushes, be careful to look on the right-hand side of where they are. Here you can see the pointer. So that's a paintbrush in that one, which means it is actually a brush. But if you go down to this one, the concept brush is all purpose. That's got a finger pointing. That's a smudge tool. That's going to take your existing colors and just smear them around. Uh, and then down here is another one that is a paintbrush with a drop on it. That's that mixer brush I was talking about. But I don't want to do that. I want to get some odd shapes in here. So I'm going to go all the way down to a set of brushes that I got from Matt Kozlowski's site. That's Matt K, M-A-T-T-K dot com. Matt used to work at Kelby One, and now he works uh, with On One Software. Does a lot of tutorials. Check out his website. I actually got some of his brushes. But what I've got here is this is a paintbrush, and you can see the shape of it. Here, I'll move it down to a darker area. The shape is irregular. That's because it was a texture of some kind that he converted into a brush. Now on this, by default, it does 100% opacity and 5% flow. I'm going to leave that where it is. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And now I'm just going to start clicking in here. And it's a very light effect. If I add another color, you'll be able to see more of what's going on. So I'm going to take an even brighter color and start and you can see what's happening here as I move it around I'm getting kind of some whitewash sort of looks to this looks less like a brush and more like you just smeared but that's actually kind of good now what I'm gonna end up doing is build up a little bit here toward the center and the reason I'm doing that is if you're gonna use these backgrounds and you're going to maybe take a picture of a dog couple of kids, your family, whatever, and you want to put them on a background, it helps separate them from the background if they're a different tone. So having something a little brighter behind them almost makes them look like they're backlit. 
So I'm kind of liking this and what it's doing. I'm going to pick another color. I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to find something in the blue range. Again, I'm trying to keep these kind of compatible colors. I like that. It's a little bit different than what we did before. I'm going to increase the size a little bit more, and I'm going to increase the flow just a little bit from 5% to about 20. And you can see what's happening here. I'm getting... Now, don't hold this down and drag it. First of all, it's kind of uh, processor intensive, and the other is you'll end up with too much of that color all in one spot. All right, so this is what I've got. You may think that's a mess, but here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go back up to the filter menu, back down to Gaussian Blur, and now I'm going to probably blur it a little bit less. Kind of like where this is right in here. It wasn't bad. I want nice, soft, granular, or not, not granular, but um, smooth transitions between the colors. A little too much blue here, not as much of the bright as I might have wanted, so I'm going to go back down. I'm going to select one of these colors that I previously had, get a little bit brighter on it, so I'm staying in the... The reason I'm doing this by clicking on these colors is I keep complementary colors in the picture. So just because you have 64 crayons on the box doesn't mean you need them for everything you do, so keep that in mind. Make that a little bit bigger there and smear that a little bit more. And now I think I've got something. Okay, one last time. I'm going to select the filter, go back to blur, blur that out, and there we go. All right, so we've got a texture. The last step I would suggest you do is go back to your filter menu, go down to Camera Raw Filter. The reason for this is you can get infinite variations. There's nothing about being an artist involved here. It's about your eye coming up with something. So this has got some soft, muted, pastel -y colors to it. That's kind of interesting. We can go on this filter panel to the individual hue and saturation levels and I could bring those yellows down a little bit so that it's more muted so I don't have a hot spot. See if I move it to the right I get more yellow. Kind of move it down a little bit. Same thing with the blues. Maybe pump the blues up a little bit more so it's a little more dramatic. Uh, there's a little bit of red in, actually probably more orange in the browns. Yeah, there we go. So I can change that. So maybe I want to leave it muted. Okay, so we can do that. The other thing you can do, and this is sort of a hidden gem if you haven't done much with the filter, is right up here toward the top. You see this little box with four um, rectangles. If you click on that, it opens up color profiles. Here... Adobe has taken some combinations of what you've done and has applied saturation, hue, blending, whatever to them. So if you run over these with your mouse, you'll see that you get different color variations. So if you find a pattern you like, you can always open up in here and change it and make it look like something else. So if you want more of an, you know, eastery feel to it, then you've got the pinks instead of browns. There's a couple of these. There's a black and white one. Now, I wouldn't really use a black and white, but if you want to emulate clouds, you can do that. There is a modern tab, and this has got some interesting things. It's a little more desaturated, a little more mute. A couple of them have got a little more color to them. And this one's pretty, you know what? This right here, I kind of like that. It is similar to what I created, but it's a little more muted. So maybe this is going to work for me. Hit OK. And there you go. You've got a pattern. Now, the very last thing I'd suggest you do before you save these out for use, keep in mind that you might be shooting in JPEG. Hopefully you're shooting in RAW, but you might be in JPEG. Your images might be bigger or smaller. And because these are textures, because there's not a lot of detail in them, they can be stretched and moved around. You know, you can select the command T will select this and then we can make this smaller, bigger. In fact, if, if you were using, I mean, real quick, if you were trying to put a background behind these elephants, this would probably come in like this. And what you would do is just stretch it until it covers 
your other photo and then save it down and there you go you'd have a texture of course you'd probably do it the other way around you would pull out your background images and then use layer masks to put them on this background but it gives you some idea but what I was going to say is when you save these go up and check the image information and make sure that you've got these at the highest resolution have them at if you have them at 300 dpi then whether you're working in something less 120 pixels or 240 which is sometimes the default you're going to get out of uh, Lightroom this way you've got an image that's high enough quality that you can use it with pretty much anything now this says it's 17 inches by 12 inches that's pretty big but again it won't matter you can resize it up or down and to be honest with you it's not going to take up very much room it says it's taken up 98 megabytes here trust me it's probably taking up in the saved JPEG format about one megabyte so you can make one of these play with it get the edges where you want it add a little um, vignette around it whatever you want to do then play with the uh, raw camera filter to change the hues and saturations on it you might end up with three or four or six backgrounds just from one time playing around anyway that's it for today if you have any questions leave it in the comments section below the video and I'd appreciate it if you like the content that you click the subscribe button and you'll be notified of future installments. Take care.